The Slam Duncan is back. Why? Because it's the start of the 2019-2020 NBA season. And it's been a while. I think the last video I did was the Kawhi Leonard to the Clippers reaction. And as you can see, different backgrounds now. Because I have now officially moved to college. Um, but that's not the important part for this video. It is the start of the 2019-2020 NBA season. And we already have a bunch of China uh, issues right now. Zion already tore his meniscus. And we have a bunch of players already out with injury. Like, for example, Clay Thompson's not going to be playing. Probably not playing this season. Kevin Durant is not playing this season. Uh, and then Paul George is going to take a while to come back. Kyle Kuzma's not playing in the first game. So, a lot has already happened. But because it's the start of the 2019-2020 NBA season... I'm going to do what everybody else does, and that's make predictions for the season. So, uh, as I go through my predictions, you can agree, disagree. Please tell me down in the comment section below, or hit me up on Twitter at Duncan underscore White14. So, as you can probably see right now, I'm obviously going to do my playoff predictions. And after that, I'm going to get to my awards. Um, I'm going to tell you my finals predictions. Um, and also, I have like a very bold prediction I want to share with you guys. And obviously, this is the start of the season, so it, this doesn't even matter, really. But it's cool to make these predictions, because th these are going to change, especially the Western Conference. You have no idea who's really going to get the first seed. But it's cool to make predictions, see how, uh, how, how correct you were at the beginning of the season, and then compare it to the end of the season when you were completely wrong. So, um, this is kind of what I have... Uh, in my head for the upcoming season. Um, so let's get into the Eastern Conference first. Uh, I have the Bucks being the best team in the Eastern Conference. Giannis, I think, is going to have a very similar type season to last uh, last season. Um, he's going to play MVP caliber. Uh, Chris Middleton, I think, is going to have a better season. Uh, and they brought back Brooke Lopez. Eric Blood, so I think, should be better this season. I hope he's going to be better this season. Um, but... It's basically the same team, except they lost Malcolm Brogdon, and I do think that was a big, actually, like a big, big hit to their team. They got Wesley Matthews to replace him, but Malcolm Brogdon is very, very good at playing both guard positions. Wesley Matthews is, is a wing player, so um, I think Wesley Matthews can definitely like fill in at shooting guard. Um, he's not going to bring what Brogdon would bring every night but it's still he's still a good player especially for the Bucks system and I do have the Bucks being the best team in the Eastern Conference this year after that at the 2C out of the 76ers who which Joel, Joel Embiid I think is gonna hopefully play at least 70 games I am gonna go out there and say that um, especially now that you have Al Horford who can take up those center minutes for him so you don't have to play Embiid 36 minutes because they really didn't have another center that could they can uh, plug in and have Embiid rest. So I think Al Horford was a humongous signing for the 76ers. And now with Josh Richardson coming in, and he's a very underrated player, uh, along with Tobias Harris, who's a very good shooter, and Ben Simmons hit a three. So I think if Ben Simmons can just shoot an 18-foot jumper consistently, I would probably change the 76ers to be my favorite. But we don't know that yet. But just from their defense, which all basically their entire starting lineup, except for Tobias Harris, um, plays really good defense. They can switch on the perimeter, um, and and beat and Horford down low. I mean, that's just like no one scoring in the paint. So from their defense and and Bede plus Horford and obviously Harris with the scoring, I think the 76ers will be second best team in the East. Uh, third team I have the Celtics I this again is also probably gonna be it, this could actually change very quickly because Jason Tatum if he becomes a star that he's supposed to become and averages like 25 points per game this year obviously then Celtics have a better chance but I just I really don't think that's gonna happen and Kemba Walker is if coming in and, put, and filling in Kyrie Irving's shoes I think Kemba's a better fit for a Brad Stevens type system, but he's also smaller than Kyrie. He's not as good of a, of a defender. 
And also, we don't know if Kemba can lead a team. Now, granted, Kyrie didn't really lead that team very well either. But uh, Kemba Walker now um, is, has a big chance to show that he can actually lead a team and lead like a top-tier team uh, in the playoffs. After Celtics is the Pacers. Um, they re-signed uh, DeMontis Sabonis, which is huge. Um, sixth man of the year candidate, definitely. Uh, him and Miles Turner really don't fit together, so they need to figure that out. But I think you have to bring Sabonis off the bench, even though he's getting paid $77 million. And Oladipo will be back later in the season. So um, the Pacers just kind of need to stay around 500. If they stay around 500, Oladipo comes back, then they're going to be top four team in the East, in my opinion. And Oladipo, I think, will be an all-star this year. Uh, the Heat, uh, they got Jimmy Butler, and that's basically it. Uh, I think Bam's going to have a great year, but uh, I'm not... Like I'm not very, like very very high on the Heat. The only reason why I have them over the Raptors and like all the other teams is because of Jimmy Butler. Really, um, Jimmy Butler can carry a team, but obviously not carry a team to be a, a contender. But um, I think with Jimmy Butler and Bam, they're going to be pretty decent. Um, Goran Dragic, I don't know what he's going to do this year. I'm a little concerned because he's getting older. Uh, losing Josh Richardson was huge. Um, so. I think just from Jimmy Butler, he's going to have a career year, and he's going to lead the Heat to the to the five C. But that's basically all they get. Um, I think they lose to the Pacers first round. Um, after that is the Raptors. Now I've seen the Raptors like be all over the place. I have I've seen people put the Raptors in the top three, and then say they're still contenders. And then I've had them, people tell me the Raptors are going to be at the bottom of the East. You don't go to the NBA Finals. Just from one player, okay? So you Kyle Lowry's still an all-star. He's probably gonna drop a little bit, but he's still an all-star. You still got Marcus Saul, you still got Serge Ibaka, Fred Van Fleet. You still have the same guys there. You just lost your best player. So are they contenders? In my opinion, no. They don't have a Kawhi Leonard now. They don't have really a go-to guy. So with Raptors, I think they're just gonna be middle of the pack, really. Um, cause that team is still solid, but they don't have that 20 point per game score, which is what Kawhi Leonard brought. So I have him at six and then I have the magic coming at the seven seed again. Um, I am definitely interested to see what they do with Vucevic and Bamba because I don't know why they really re-signed Vucevic to that much money and that long. Um, so like they're kind of in the middle of like, all right, we have veterans that are leading us to the playoffs but we also have young guys like Jonathan Isaac, Aaron Gordon, uh, Markel Fultz, and Mo Bamba that they want to like lift up and become the face of their franchise. So they're not really getting anywhere like higher than the seven seed. So it's just kind of weird. But I do think with Steve Clifford doing such a great job, they got Terrence Ross back. Vucevic is probably going to play the same way he did last year. They'll make it to the seven seed. And of course, if you know me, my Bulls, I'm hoping... <laughs> This is basically just because I'm a Bulls fan, and I have to put the Bulls. Uh, Tomas Sadaransky, I thought was a, a very, very great signing. I'm not the biggest fan of the Thaddeus Young signing. Uh, if you watch any of my videos, you know that. Um, and I think Zach Levine's going to be averaging 27 points per game, be an all-star this year. Hopefully, Markinen can average around 20. I'm not sure about that. But this basically just depends if everyone can stay healthy. For the Bulls. If everyone stays healthy and Levine becomes an all-star, I think the Bulls are easily the eighth seed, at least. Um, my record for them is like 40 wins, 40, 42, 41-41. So um, the thing is, though, with those last two spots for me in the Eastern Conference, where the Magic or Bulls are at right now, I think you could definitely put the Pistons there, uh, the Wizards there, uh, the Hawks, obviously. It's just basically you could, like, Go through all the teams except don't pick the Hornets, Cavs, or Knicks um, that can make the playoffs for those last two spots. Um, so that's East. That's my Eastern Conference predictions. And I have the Bucks coming out as the winners of the Eastern Conference in the playoffs. For the West, I have, and let me tell you right now, the West, I just have it as this, but I think it, the Western Conference standings to come down to the last game of the season because these teams, there's so many teams in the West. That they're just gonna be beating each other up. So if any team gets close to 60 wins, that's a quite an that's like an insane achievement. 
Um, but I think there it's gonna like teams are only gonna get maybe max fifty five wins in the West, and that's even then that's like an achievement. They're gonna be beating each other up. There's no easy uh, opponent every single night for Western Conference teams. But you could take basically take the like my top six teams, and if you could flip them all around, basically, I'd be okay with it. But here's why I think it's gonna be Clippers. I think are the best team in the West. Um, I have the Jazz, Lakers, Trailblazers, Nuggets, Rockets, Warriors, Spurs. So Clippers, obviously, we know Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, uh, with Doc Rivers as head coach, one of the, they're probably be one of the best defensive teams in the league. Uh, and then. Lou Williams, Montrezl Harrell off the bench is already 40 points. So I think they have the most depth, the best defense, and probably the best coach in the West. Um, and the top two two-way players in the league. So I think the Clippers are the best team, and I have them at the one seed. The Jazz, people are sleeping on the Jazz. Um, the Jazz got Mike Conley, who is going to... Basically take the Jazz team from being like a middle of the pack playoff team to contender like status. Uh, one of the issues with the Jazz was when they had Ricky Rubio, he was so inconsistent. So when Rubio played well, the Jazz looked like a like a legit contender. Well, now with Mike Conley always being there as that consistent point guard alongside Donovan Mitchell, the Jazz are going to be more consistent, and they're going to have a great defense, and they're going to be a contender status this year. Um, Rudy Gobert is obviously one of the best defensive centers, and then they signed Bogdanovich, which no one talks about, and that was huge because one of their issues was shooting the ball consistently. You had guys that could shoot it, but not that like not very consistent. You know, like Jay Crowder. You had Derek Favors start shooting threes. Now you got Bogdanovich who can shoot the three really well and defend. That starting lineup looks fantastic. I have the Jazz um, at two. Lakers, LeBron, and AD. The only reason why I really have it like this, though, is because of loan management. Um, I think I'd have the Lakers at two if they weren't going to loan manage LeBron and AD. Um, and also, I don't know the health of both of them. Like LeBron missed 20-something games. AD is been known to not stay healthy. So if one of them misses a significant amount of games, they're going to drop. And I think there's a good chance that's going to happen. Um, but if they just have one, at least one of those guys for the season, for most of the season, I think they'll be fine. So I have Lakers at three. Trailblazers, I have Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum having great years. They definitely got worse defensively in the perimeter, but they got better defensively in the interior. So Hassan Whiteside's going to be a big... Uh, help to their interior defense. Um, for me, it comes down to their bench. Uh, they don't have the same bench, really. They still have Ronnie Hood, thank God. Um, and then Kent Bazemore is now on the team, which I think is a better fit than Evan Turner. But they don't have a backup point guard. So I think they're going to have to be switching uh, Lillard and McCollum's minutes. And so like either one of them is playing the point guard position. Uh, the Nuggets... Uh, I have them dropping to five because I think the Nuggets aren't going to actually um, like have the same amount of success as last year. Now, granted, a lot of their wins from last year in the regular season was because of the altitude there. But I still think just because they're so young that they're going to drop this year because I think the West just got better, in my opinion. So I think it's going to be a struggle for them to actually get to like the two seed again. But... Um, I think Jokic is going to have a great year. I just think defensively they're not they're not at the same level as the top three teams. Rockets, Russell Westbrook and James Harden, I don't know how that's going to work out. I actually think it's not really going to work out um, because they're going to be fighting over who has the ball. Now, granted, D'Antoni has done a good job with Chris Paul and James Harden, so maybe that's going to work. I do think Russell Westbrook's going to have a great year with assists and actually shooting the three ball. Because now with Westbrook, he actually is not kicking out to Andre Roberson. He's kicking out to Eric Gordon. So his assist rate is going to skyrocket. Um, and he's also probably going to have to shoot the three ball a lot more. So I think that three-point percentage is going to go up. I have the Warriors because they're the Warriors. Um, Steph Curry, I think, is going to have a great year. But I think with the Warriors, it's the main priority is to make sure to keep Steph healthy. Uh, don't let Steph get injured because you already have Klay Thompson injured. Um, 
I think their dynasty is put on hold for the moment. So um, once Clay Thompson gets back next season, then everything should be fine. And I think they're going to be right back at the top of the Western Conference. But for this season, I have them making the playoffs because they got D'Angelo Russell and Steph Curry. Draymond Green, they re-signed. So they're going to still be a decent team. And they'll make the playoffs because Steve Kerr is a great coach. And Steph is going to have a crazy season. And my last pick is very, very tough. Because the West has so many teams you could just have at the 8th seed. Um, I picked the Spurs because Greg Popovich... And I'm going to roll with the Spurs because they're, they're always just so consistent no matter what. You know what you're going to get from the Spurs night to night. They had a top five offense last season and no one talks about that. And they didn't shoot a lot of threes. So I understand it's like, well, they're old school type basketball. But it worked. They made it to the seventh seed last year. And I think they're going to make the playoffs again. Um, I don't have the Kings because you don't know what you're going to get from the Kings every single night. I think De'Aaron Fox is going to have a great year. But... Um, I don't think the rest of the team's going to stay consistent. Um, the Mavericks is the same idea. I think Doncic is actually going to have a really good year. But with Porzingis coming back, you don't know um, how he's going to play. And I don't think that supporting cast is going to be enough for them to make it to the uh, playoffs. And then Pelicans, unfortunately, just lost Zion for six to eight weeks. Probably longer because they're going to preserve him. And that just took him out of the playoff race. So... Um, I have the Clippers coming out of the West, and I have the Bucks versus Clippers in the finals. I have the Bucks with the better record because they're facing the Eastern Conference more, and that's just the weaker conference by far. Um, but I do have the Clippers winning in six games. So that's my finals prediction, is Clippers win the championship, Kawhi Leonard gets finals MVP. Um, and my other bull prediction for the playoffs, though, is that I believe that the Lakers are not going to even make it to the Western Conference Finals, but they're going to lose in the Western Conference Semifinals. Uh, I think they're going to lose to the Jazz. I and I'm, it, it does, like, the, this Western Conference is really just about matchups because if the Lakers face, let's say, the Nuggets in the Western Conference Finals or Western Conference Semifinals, I think the Lakers win. But they face the Jazz or Portland, those, I think they're going to actually lose to those teams. Um, the Jazz just have such a great defense that, you know, they're going to try to attack the paint. You got you have Rudy Gobert defending the paint, and then you have the Jazz are just such a good shooting team that I think the Lakers defensively are going to struggle because they have to close out on all the shooters. And I just think the Jazz overall have a better team. Trailblazers, you have Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. Once Nurkic gets back, they, they have an even better interior defense. So I think the Lakers are not making it to the Western Conference uh, Finals and not to the Finals, obviously. So that's my bold prediction for the playoffs. And now we're going to get to the awards. Um, MVP is probably one of the most interesting cases because you could definitely, like, you could pick Steph. You could pick uh, Giannis. You could pick Kawhi. You can pick LeBron, Anthony Davis. you got so many people you can pick. Um, one guy that I don't think is being talked enough about is Damian Lillard. Uh, he had an incredible season last year. No one really talked about it. Uh, they made it to the Western Conference Finals for a reason. I know they got swept, but they made it for a reason. And I think Lillard is going to absolutely go off this year. And even though I have the Trailblazers at four in the, in the conference... It's still going to be really close in record. So they may be the fourth seed, but by like two games. All right. Uh, so it. I just think Lillard's going to go off an average, probably around thirty, like he usually does, and he's gonna he's gonna really show his leadership this year. Uh, rookie of the year because Zion just went out. I mean, I, I had Zion obviously before his injury, but now because he just went out, I put Ja Morant. Um, because I think Ja is going to get the most amount of minutes um, besides, obviously, Zion. Um, I understand with RJ, but I don't think RJ, under the New York uh, spotlight, is going to really have an immediate success. I think with Ja, just giving the ball in his hands already and having some veterans like Valanchunas around him um, is going to really help him. And then I think Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to take a humongous step forward and they're both just going to help each other. 
So I have Ja winning Rookie of the Year just because the fact that Zion is now out with injury. Defensive Player of the Year, I have Rudy Gobert. Um, I don't think they're actually going to have the best defense. It's kind of tough between the Clippers and the Jazz, but uh, I think just because Gobert is the center, he's probably going to get the most blocked shots, have the most impact on any shots going to the rim. Um, I'm going to give Rudy Gobert another Defensive Player of the Year. Six Man of the Year is going to go to Lou Williams because, you know, that's his nickname is Six Man of the Year. Uh, and because I think the Clippers, no matter what, it could be top four seed. I have them as the best team um, and gain the one seed. People are going to know Lou Williams is a bucket right off the bench. And he's going to average probably around 18. So... Him, Montrezl Harrell are just insane off the bench. You can give it to really either one, but I'm going to go with Lou Williams. Like I said before, Jaron Jackson Jr. is definitely, I, I think, going to really improve this year. Especially because now he has a point guard that's going to be dynamic. Think about the pick and pop game between Morant and Jackson Jr. It's going to be insane. Hard to guard. Um, Memphis, I don't think they're going to have a great season, but they're going to definitely look better. Um, and then finally, my coach of the year is Doc Rivers. Because uh, I think um, they're going to have to low manage Paul George and Kawhi. And because of that, you're not going to have both guys every single night. And Doc Rivers is still going to find a way to win a bunch of games when he only has one star or neither star on the court. Um, so I think you have to give Doc Rivers that credit to... I mean, if you just looked at last year, he, didn't, he made the 8th the seed with no all-star on the team and they still took the Warriors to six games so I think because of that he's going to show that again even without an all-star or just one all-star playing in a very tough Western Conference he's going to have the, his guys ready to go every single night and they're going to actually win a lot of games without either Kawhi or George playing um so final thoughts before this season gets started um I am a, I'm very un, uh, sad about Zion already getting injured. I think he, I, I really wanted to watch him play, uh, but unfortunately, uh, injury. And I'm worried. I am actually concerned about him uh, getting injured a lot. But hopefully that goes away. Um, I am very excited for Staples Center this year because they're gonna have 82 nights, 82 games uh, this year. It's gonna be packed. It's going to be filled with stars every single night. So I'm very excited for Staples Center. And the fact now, I think there are at least six teams in the Western Conference that are contenders to win the championship. And I think in the East, there's at least two, potentially three contenders for the, for the, in the East. We finally have just balance in the NBA where you have multiple contenders instead of it just being the Warriors all the time and LeBron always dominating the East. You now have balance between who can actually win the title because now we're coming into this season thinking you could pick really out of nine teams to win the title and you have a good point. It's not just like, oh, Warriors are going to win it. It's now that you could pick the Jazz, the Lakers, the Trailblazers, the Bucks, the 76ers, and you could you actually have a valid reason to pick them. So I'm extremely excited for this upcoming season. There is balance now in the NBA, and this year, I'm telling you, it's going to be exciting throughout the entire season and come down to the last couple of games. You're going to see a bunch of teams shifting in the standings. It's going to be a big, uh, it's going to be a big factor in the playoffs of who has home court and who doesn't. So, um, Stay engaged throughout the entire season. You don't want to miss anything this year. So, I am officially back, and I'm happy to be back. Um, and I'm excited for this uh, upcoming season. Uh, Pelicans versus uh, Raptors starting off, and then the two LA teams go at it later. So, can't wait for the season to get started. Uh, make sure to leave a like on this video. Um, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you're uh, an M an NBA uh, fan, and also if you're a Bulls fan. Uh, and make sure you go follow me on Twitter at Duncan underscore White 14 for more NBA analysis and also just uh, instant reactions to anything that happens. Um, can't wait for the season to get started. Stunky White, signing off for now.